Legal question 78 subsets, it's a median legal question. So give an uh, integer array nums of unique elements, something like this example 1, 2, 3. Return all possible subsets, the power set, aka. <clears throat> the solution set must not contain duplicate subsets. Return the solution in any order. So it can't have any duplicates, but um, you can return them in any order. Basically, the subsets of 1, 2, 3 is that <clears throat> first is empty, and then 1, 2, and then you also have 3, and then 2 is 1, 2, and then 1, 3, 2, 3, and then the last combo is 1, 2, 3, right? And if you have 0, and then you have 2, 1 is the empty one, 1 is 1. And then here's some constraint here. Um, if you look at it, this is last uh, six months. It, it's a question asked by Facebook uh, 34 times. So it's definitely a high frequency interview question. So this is something that uh, it's a really good question to practice on. Um, if you think about this, this is kind of similar to what we did yesterday. It's another backtracking question. So if we don't do backtracking, right, if we just do it uh, iter uh, iteratively, um, it's going to um, work as well. And we just say for all the n in the nums, we just basically continue to add each number and now we can return the result in the end. If we do it um, in, uh, we do it by using backtracking, we can start passing um, two uh, parameter. One is like the uh, index, which starting from zero, and then the current path, basically, which is the subset that in the final result. And then remember that I mentioned that the backtracking important thing is that we want to find a base condition is that in this base condition, it's not that if the subset length equals to none because they're simply not equal. So in this uh, con base condition is that if this um, this uh, length of this is in the range of the nums, right? It's in the range of the nums. And then um, it, you can uh, append the, the, the result, the subset to the result. And then we're going to go through the um, each i uh, starting from zero. And then we're going to continue to append and pop and uh, backtracking and uh, just passing the parameter. And then we're going to call the function. And I'll show you how to do this in code. Um, so I'm going to say define a result. Basically, this is the output that we're going to um, Re, uh, print in the end and then I'm gonna define backtracking and then I will pass two parameter one is the let's say the index is first that will start the index at zero and then the current basically is the subset so basically current whatever that we are getting here um, and so the first is base condition right the base condition basically if the length of the subset basically the current is in the range of the um the the nums then we can append the result so we're gonna say if length of current equals to let's say equals to k k is the we're gonna define k later when we call the function so if they equals k, I'm going to press append um, current. I'm going to append the copy of the current, whatever it is, to the end result. You can either do it uh, this way, or you can do current, just do a copy like this. I'm just going to change it to um, uh, current for now. And after the base condition, I'm going to go through the for loop for i in range length of nums. I'm going to basically go through every single nums, but I'm going to start from first and then to first is zero, right? Start from first to the length of nums. 
and then for each I, I'm gonna say the current append. I'm gonna append the nums I. So basically, I'm gonna append this number. Say append the one first, right? Append the one to the end result, and then to the sorry, append the one to the current. Basically, the subset, and then I'm gonna run the backtracking. And then when I run the backtracking, I'm gonna pass the parameter, and since first is uh, i, right? So I'm gonna say i plus one, and then the current is current. And then after I add it, it's like it was empty. Then I added a one, and then I current. I need to pop pop back up, so then I can go through the Another different combination. Definitely make sure that you need to pop the result like this. And then next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this backtracking function. And when you call the backtracking function, and remember we defined it a k here, and um, for k in range, this k is what we defined and length of nums. I need to plus one in this case is because um, there's empty one here and so I need to make sure that it's plus one so I don't miss any out any of the answers here um, because the it's one two three and then the for the range thing you need to know that the last when you do plus one it actually only go through uh, the go to the end, uh, land of nums. So then I'm going to call the backtracking function like this. And then in the end, I'm going to return the result. I think that's it for the function. Yep, it works. Um, so besides this, I, I'm, I'm also going to show you, this is the backtracking way. I'm also going to show you how to do this um, iteratively. So if, say, you don't use any backtracking function, right? I'm going to define the result like this, basically a list inside of a list, and for nums in nums. So basically every single number in the nums list, what I'm going to do is the result. I'm going to add the result. <coughs> I, basically the result will be I plus the num, each number in the nums. I'm going to add it. And for I, the it's basically list comprehension if you want to uh, study in uh, Python. And then for i in the result, i for i in result, basically, plus equals the, I'm going to append the additional number every single time. Result plus i plus number for i in the result. And that's it. Each time I'm going to add on to it, that will be the result. And then, in the end, I'm going to return the result. Yep, this works too. This, if you're doing this way, then you don't need to do it uh, using backtracking. So I hope this is helpful. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll show you more questions. Okay, bye-bye.